After two weeks, the Olympic Games in Paris is finally coming to a close. And I won't say about time too, but it's fairly safe to say that the Olympic Games from beginning to end have been somewhat of a shambles. None of this, of course, is to detract from the individual achievements and endeavours of the Olympians themselves. I've watched quite a lot of the Olympic Games and I've always been constantly impressed with the feats that us humans are able to achieve when we commit our lives and commit our time to doing something different. However, it's fairly safe to say that from a logistical and an organisational standpoint, it has been somewhat catastrophic. We started with the opening ceremony, which was in effect three hours or so of boats sailing down the River Seine, including athletes from over 200 countries. Now, of course, this ceremony was blighted with rain, but I couldn't help but feel when I saw a handful of Ugandan athletes standing on the back of a barge in their Pacamax, waving at the diminishing crowds, if they wondered what the hell was actually going on. This opening ceremony, of course, was punctuated with other forms of, should we say, entertainment, including what we are led to believe was a depiction of the Last Supper, featuring a large number of drag queens and people dressed in otherwise provocative or emotive outfits. This raised so many complaints that the IOC actually came out and apologised for this very part of the ceremony, saying it was meant to be inclusive, it was meant to show diversity. And as I said in a previous video, I don't understand the need to spoon feed diversity and inclusion into the Olympic Games. This is a sporting occasion which encompasses over 200 different nations. Every race and every ethnicity is accounted for. And for the first time, I believe, there were as many female athletes competing in the Games as male. That is true diversity. And not only is it true diversity, it's true diversity underpinned with meritocracy. It goes to show that despite your ethnicity, despite your race, despite your background, if you strive to achieve and you practice and you train and you commit to something, you can achieve and you can make the greatest sporting occasion on earth. Right, sorry to stop the video there. Just want to quickly ask a very, very big favour. If you like these videos, do please hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And if you change your mind and you get bored of me rambling on about random things, you can always unsubscribe at any time. Also, if you appreciate the videos, there will be a link in the description to buy me a beer. Yes, the URL says buy me a coffee, but we all know, don't we? Anyway, back to the video. But once these athletes had finally got their drenched selves off the boats and to the Olympic Village, they could prepare for the Games in earnest. This, of course, would be fine if they didn't arrive to cardboard beds in many cases, and in many instances, those beds hadn't actually been built or made up for them. Their rooms were had no aircon, and this was for the same reason as the cardboard beds. The whole Olympic Village had been built with eco-friendliness and green credentials at the heart of their construction. But of course, this meant that a lot of things were incomplete and in many respects didn't work. The lack of air conditioning meant that in many instances, Olympians had to try and sleep in almost unbearably warm conditions, or in many instances, as they did, go out and buy their own air conditioning units or get them bought in, thus totally undermining the green element of the Olympic Village's construction. But once they did eventually get a good night's sleep, they could then prepare for the events. They could go and get some good food at the Olympic Village, except there was none. The catering at the Olympics was woeful. They had massively undersubscribed on high protein foods, such as chicken, which naturally forms the basis of Olympic diets. The American team, and I believe many other teams, actually flew in their own chefs, flew in their own food, and then distributed this to the Olympians, so they were actually able to compete with proper nutrition. But once they had eventually slept and maybe had something to eat, they could then get on and compete in the events. Well, that's if they weren't delayed, such as in the instances of the men's triathlon, which despite apparently $1 billion being spent on cleaning up the River Seine, it was still unfit for humans to swim in. And once they did eventually start the men's triathlon and get the people swimming in the River Seine, that many of them became ill, with one man vomiting multiple times on TV in front of the cameras after swimming in the polluted water. If you could get a good night's sleep, get something to eat, put up with the highly polluted water, which is purely insane, my apologies, sorry about that, then you may actually finally claw your way to basically the holy grail for an Olympian, an Olympic medal and a place on the podium. But if you got that Olympic medal, then you may have been disappointed. There have been many reports that after a short period of time wearing the medals, they become tarnished, they become chipped, and they become pitted and corroded. There have been many images posted by Olympians online of tarnished medals, those with the, which are pitted 
and chipped already. This poor quality construction undermines the true achievement of the men and women who compete in the Olympic Games. Whilst the Games were steeped in controversy away from the competitive arena, there was also controversy inside the arena of competition. And one of the biggest controversies leading up to the Games was the inclusion for the 2024 Games of breakdancing. Now, I think we can tell the success of the breakdancing event by the fact that it will not be included in the 2028 Games. This isn't, of course, a take away from the difficulty level of, you know, associated with undertaking such moves. However, it did seem to detract somewhat from some of the true physical endeavour displayed in other disciplines. That was, of course, other than the Australian competitor, who, as it later turns out, actually has quite a high ranking qualification in breakdancing theory, whatever that actually means. It was somewhat of a combination of breakdancing, interpretive dance and some form of seizure, which is the first and probably the last time we'll ever see the like at an Olympic Games. It was quite hard to tell really whether this was a genuine innovative attempt to wow the judges with a new form of breakdancing or whether they were simply making a mockery of the event in and of itself in the same way that Ireland did by entering a robotic chicken into the Eurovision Song Contest. And if you don't believe me, search it on YouTube, it happened. The whole Games has been marred by controversy around the women's boxing, where at least two of the athletes have been criticised for to mitigate the risk of me being called transphobic or being told that I'm spreading misinformation. Shall we just say that they are our biological irregularities pertaining to their sex which would naturally maybe eliminate them from competing under the sex that they were competing under. Jesus I think that's politically correct enough but we all know what we're talking about and it ultimately led to two of these athletes taking gold medals which may potentially have gone to other competitors who had trained their entire lives to get to that position. So what have we got left now? Well, we've got the closing ceremony to look forward to, and I'm very, very much looking forward to a depiction of Muhammad in high hills dancing provocatively over the River Seine. Stay safe and stay sane, everyone.